in missionary work, the primary responsibility for receiving, getting referrals falls on the members. But uh, they don't know how to get referrals, and so the Lord tells them in the 33rd section of the Doctrine and Covenants, uh, starting with verse 7, he says, Yea, verily, verily, I say unto you that the field is white, all ready to harvest. That means it's harvest time. This is not seed planting time. This is harvest time. Wherefore, thrust in your sickles with all of your might, mind and strength. And then, and then the next three verse tells you how to do that. Open your mouth and it shall be filled and you shall become even as Nephi of old who journeyed from Jerusalem in the wilderness. The next verse, ninth verse, yea, open your mouth and spare not. And you shall be laden with sheaves upon your back. For lo, I am with you. See, you're not doing it by yourself. The Lord will help you. He's doing it with you. The next verse says, Yea, open your mouths, and it, they shall be filled, saying, Repent, repent, and prepare you the way of the Lord, for the, uh, and make his path straight. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, the kingdom of his, is at heaven wherever you are. It's at hand because you are their access in. And so three verses there, he all starts out with open your mouth. So he'd like you to open your mouth and say a few things. And generally speaking, it doesn't make any difference as long as you talk about the church. He'll take whatever you say and make something good out of it to fit the person that you're talking to. And so I find that the best way to ask questions, two questions, used to be we'd say, do you, what do you know about the Mormons? And they'd say nothing. And you'd say, would you like to know more? And they'd say no. And you're all finished right there. So here's another uh, set of questions that is better, much better indeed. You say, uh, by the way, do you like to read? And they'll say yes. And you say if I would send you a book that contains the actual account of the visit of the Lord Jesus Christ to America, would you read it? We find that 97.5% of the people you ask that second question to say, yes, I'd like to read a book like that. Sometimes they say, Christ didn't visit America. And you say, how do you know? And they'll say, I don't. Yes, I'll read the book. You say, fine, give me your name, address, and telephone number. Now, I developed another way because uh, we had a, a man who wanted to do something for missionaries, and so he developed a coin on one side. And so you have to carry that coin in your pocket. I've been carrying it in my pocket for over 20 years. It's been worth about 50 baptisms so far, and, and I'm not finished yet. <laughs> the best way then to get a, a referral when you're buying something and while you have your money in your hand you have their undivided attention and so you just take your money out when you start to pay for it and drop it on the counter and drop that coin on the counter with it they'll pick up this coin people who are used to taking money they've never seen a coin like that they'll pick this up and say what's this they just asked me who Joseph Smith and Moroni are because that's what's on the coin, you see. And you say, in about uh, 40 seconds, you can say, this represents a prophet in ancient America. His name was Moroni. The Lord gave this prophet a commandment to record the history of his dealings with the people in North America. He did. He recorded on golden plates and he hid it in the ground where it lay for 1,400 years until the Lord raised up a new prophet whose name was Joseph Smith. He's a modern American prophet. He gave this prophet a commandment to translate that record. He translated it. It contains the actual account of the visit of the Lord Jesus Christ to America. Would you be interested in reading this ancient record? And they say, uh, well, yes, 90% of them always say yes, they'd like to read this ancient record. And you say, well, um, give me your name, address, and telephone number, and I'll have the record delivered right to your door. 
Okay? And they'll do it. And so you need to have a piece of paper and a pen when you go wherever you go. And uh, you have them write their name, address, and telephone number on your, your card or your pen. And so you take a copy of the Book of Mormon and put your picture in it. And that's important that you put your picture in. You'll see why in a minute. And you always cut a few cards and keep them in your book of copies of the Book of Mormon, see? And so you can just take it right out and get their name, address, and telephone number in their own handwriting. You'll see why that's important. Then you take a copy of the Book of Mormon and put your picture in it. And this page, the next page, we kept blank so you could write your testimony. Something nice and simple like, Dear John or Alice or Helen, whoever uh, signed your card, here is the book I promised to send you. If you will read this book and apply the promise on page 529, Smyrna 10 and 4, where it tells you that when you shall receive these things, I would exhort you to ask God, the Eternal Father, if these things are not true. And if you shall ask with real intent, having faith in Jesus Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. So that's a promise that we want them to try. If you apply the promise on page 529, it will change your life as it has changed mine and anyone who reads this book. 